Good morning. As always, we go on the bongs. Um, and if you've tuned in before, you'll be familiar, but welcome particularly if you hadn't. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace, and to ask on behalf of all men such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us kneel in silence and remember God's presence with us now. And in the little Chelsea Old Church prayer book that I have before me, this is on page three, and the word, starting words are Almighty and Most Merciful Father. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and Most Merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which you ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, and according to thy promise declare unto mankind, in Christ Jesus, you are Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we say together on page five, the Venite, beginning with the words, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. The Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if he will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and is in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We say as our psalm, Psalm 8, and in my book it's page 353, and the first line is, O Lord, our Governor. Page 353, Psalm 8, O Lord, our Governor. O Lord, our Governor, how excellent is thy name in all the world! Thou hast set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of very babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength, because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. For I will consider thy heavens, even the works of thy fingers the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, 
What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him lower than the angels, to crown him with glory and worship. Thou makest him to have dominion of the works of thy hands, and thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the fields, the fowls of the air, and the fishes of the sea, and whatsoever walketh through the paths of the seas. O Lord our governor, how excellent is thy name in all the world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the reading from the Old Testament is taken from the prophet Isaiah, verses 12 to 17, verses 27 to 31. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and mocked off the heavens with a span, enclosed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountain in scales, and the hills in a balance? Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or as his counsellor has instructed him? Whom did he consult for his enlightenment, and who taught him the paths of justice? Who taught him knowledge, and showed him the way of understanding? Even the nations are like a drop from a bucket, and are accounted as dust on the scales. See, he takes up the isles like fine dust. Lebanon would not provide fuel enough nor are its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, he does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. By those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Here ends the first lesson. On page six, we say the Te Deum, the first words being, we praise thee, O God. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the father of an infinite majesty. Thine honourable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Garbon them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, 
have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The second reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, chapter 2, verses 13, 11 to 13, and the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace. And may the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. And the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Here ends the second reading. On page 11, we say the jubilati. It begins with the words, O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And we continue saying our creed on page 11. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, 
and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The colic for today, Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, who has given unto us thy servants grace by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. We beseech thee that thou wouldest keep us steadfast in this faith and evermore defend us from all adversities, who livest and reignest one God, world without end. Amen. The second colic for peace. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the third collect for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the Queen's Majesty, and as we pray for our realm, we pray for our Prime Minister, the First Lord of the Treasury, and we pray for the leader of Her Majesty's loyal opposition. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the only ruler of princes who doth from thy throne behold all the dwellings upon earth. Most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth. And so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that you may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue her plenteously with heavenly gifts. Grant her in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen her, that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies. And finally, after this life, she may obtain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the clergy and people, and we particularly pray for how we work out how we worship after, as we come out of lockdown. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone work his great marvels, Send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. And in a moment of silence, we remember all those who lie on our hearts. We give thanks for the lives of those who have died and remember those who are mourning. We pray for our land as we come out of lockdown and how we do that safely. And we pray for all those who've made our lives during it possible. The postman, the people who work in shops, the dust people, 
all those who work in the NHS and shops and all those things that made our lives possible. And as we come out of lockdown, we pray as a nation for harmony, for understanding and listening to each other. And may some of the grace that has been present in our society during it continue and flourish. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. And we say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. The sermon for today, Trinity Sunday. Remembering our readings were from the prophet Isaiah. <coughs> St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians and the Gospel of St. Matthew. Today is Trinity Sunday. At first sight, the doctrine of the Trinity can seem as if the Church is being more complicated than it need be. What is being said is the nature of God as Creator. Jesus as the embodiment of the Christian life lived out. His death and resurrection pointing us to salvation. We are enabled to live out the Christ life by the power of the Holy Spirit. This could be confusing, but a moment's reflection on ourselves makes us realise how complex we are as human beings. Our parents' influence is always with us. We can recapture how we felt as a child, and sometimes we behave in a childish way. Love we receive from our families and friends. So we begin to understand what is being said and what the Church is trying to say by the doctrine of the Trinity. We hold in creative tension that we're created by God, that we're attempting to live that out, Sometimes well, sometimes not. The Christian life. All of this enabled by the power of the Holy Spirit. The ultimate gift God gives us is that we are created. We're human beings. God took another risk by sending his Son to also be a human being as we are. The events of Jesus' life, his death and his resurrection, made the disciples realize two things. One, they had encountered God in him. And two, that which we celebrated last week as Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit, which enabled them to live it out. The vehicle to do this was the church. And we're still doing this 2,000 years later in unprecedented times. The history of the church is a baffling mixture of success and failure. We can point to the glories of the church and terrible moments when the church has utterly failed in living out the gospel. We also reflect that in our own lives. The prophet Isaiah, in our first reading, echoes this. He gives power to the faint, strengthens the powerless, and those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. In our second reading, St. Paul echoes this, brothers and sisters. Put things in order, 
listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and may the God of love and peace be with you. And we need to remember those words as we come out of this very difficult time. We will always have differences of opinion, but as a nation, I would that we work together rather than argue and get lost in recriminations as to what has happened and how we deal with it. Last week, I said that Pentecost was the birth of the church. Trinity Sunday is the day we give thanks to God, our creator, to Jesus Christ, the life lived, that we might live it out also, and the power of the Holy Spirit that enabled us to do so. As our gospel reading says, Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. This is the moment we have notices before we go on to our communion. Um, the good news is we were expecting uh, a statement from the government this week, but it does look it's imminent, and we're hoping that we will open on July the 5th. Now, how we do that, it, um, do keep an eye on the website, because we've got to work it out. We want to start, but we ought to see also want to be safe. Uh, do remember, the website holds all things necessary for salvation. If you're not good at the website, get a friend to tell you about it. Uh, the office is open 24 hours a day. You can ring me 24 hours a day. I'm always very ready to chat. Um, I was slightly surprised that this week my grandson, Archie, has started a nursery and what really, really surprised me was that the, the general comment was the teachers, they said, he does talk a lot. I cannot think where that comes from. Now, we're going to have our communion service. And because we've had the Lord's Prayer and a creed, we start on page 255 in our prayer book. And the words which you'll know, uh, the, the first words are, we do not presume. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs into thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world and it institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory that his precious death until his coming again hear us O merciful father we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine 
according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Go forth into the world in peace, be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good and render to no man evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honour everyone, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, and may the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Looking forward to seeing you all very soon.